hey mate, you're a bit of a dodgy geezer, you know what I mean? Well, this is the real deal. This is a geezer. One of the most active ones in the geezer field this morning, the geezers of El Tatio. Indigenous language means the tears of the old man. We are in the Altiplano of Chile in South America in April 2016. This is a caldera. This is a plain of land surrounded by volcano craters. When you've got underground streams coming in contact with a hot igneous volcanic rock, you've got boiling water formed and pressure building under the ground. And you get the spitting and the steaming. And if you come here early in the morning like we did before sunrise, you get more evaporation which can be seen easier and geysers are famous world over we're on the second highest one in the world at 3480 meters high over 13,000 feet it's the third largest geyser field in the world there are 64 geysers here and lots of fumaroles it's volcanic activity. I saw one in Nicaragua in 1983 which was full of boiling, bubbling mud. It's worthwhile coming here So students of GCSE Geography. When you study plate tectonics, earthquakes and volcanoes, this is an aspect of geography which I hope you'll find interesting. It's Mr. Turner signing off. Enjoy your lesson. Here we've got a prolific fumarole right in front of the camera. Beautiful landscape and through the steam which is slightly smelly you've got a geyser in the background. There it is. This is a beautiful sight for a video. And I'm trying to convince you it's not your next door neighbor's bonfire. As we look southeast, we can zero in on a collection of geysers. Geysers sprout water in the air, the higher the better. The best one in the world is in Wyoming in Yellowstone Park called Old Faithful, which we would have read about in our books when we grew up. This is one of the reasons I'm trying to convince children to opt for GCSE Geography because the world is a fantastic place and if you can go places you'll understand what you're looking at. And geysers don't occur just anywhere. It has to be in volcanic places. Now this is a, like a bubbling crater, oozing steam. These geysers aren't always functioning. It all depends upon pressure buildup. I was going to make a video at two of them, standing between them, but by the time I got back when the light had improved because it was dawn, they virtually disappeared. But this is the biggest one I've seen in the field today. This is truly a magnificent geothermal spectacle. In El Salvador I saw geothermal activity. I bathed in a hot river where women washed their clothes and I stepped on boiling volcanic mud by accident and burnt a little hole in my foot. 
and that place is called Los Ausoles and nearby you've got a geothermal electrical power station. So humans in time to make the planet greener will harness geothermal power not just using coal or nuclear. This is Turner's Travels once again enthused and being effusive with the knowledge that I wish to impart to people to go and see the real world and help a few poor people and to animate students to see beyond the textbook, see beyond the GC exam certificate and see the world and understand what you've learnt. Here you have a combination of fumaroles lovely fountain here you wouldn't want to jump into this place and high here you've got a row of steam from the fumaroles the ground level streams and in the background you got the geysers the Americans say geysers And over by the part coaches, there's a swimming pool, very hot water, where some of the group are swimming. But unfortunately on tours, they don't give you enough time. I really like to absorb the environment. That's why I travel as an independent backpacker. I can spend as long as I like in places. But sometimes you've got to join a group because there's no transport to a region or it's dangerous or we've got to get there at a certain time so our time's limited. I would spend a few more hours here although the sun's up the vaporization is still contrasting nicely with the ambience truly Chile is magnificent I've just read that this is the highest geyser field in the world it says so on Lonely Planet, it says so on the official plaques, but the man driving the minibus said it was the second highest, the, the highest is in Bolivia. But you often get conflicting information. On my videos, sometimes I don't get enough time to learn about a place, or I can't learn about the information fast enough, or I've got to write down lots of statistics. But this geyser field must be two kilometers long and the sun's risen over Bolivia the camera's facing north and compared to Bolivia and Peru Chile has got a very small area as an altiplano and there aren't any indigenous people here wearing bowler hats which is characteristic of the high plain around Lake Titicaca I do hope you'll come here. I do hope that the videos from the Turner's Travels will inspire, interest, entertain and inform along with the keynote phrase that the channel is built upon a versatile range of subject material. It's Michael Turner, school teacher, independent traveler, backpacker, explorer, author, intrepid, independent traveler, signing off.